You know, I have a bit of a confession to make. To be completely frank, I personally actually enjoy making Match at the Gathering decks more than I actually enjoy playing them. And it's not at all to say that I don't have a blast playing Magic. It's much more so I just really love the creative process behind building a deck. So that is to say, I've brought some of my decks along here, and today we're going to be going through to each of my decks and creating a short little theme song for it that really you know, fits the theme of it. And in the meantime, I can show you the uh, stupidity that is most of my commander decks. So without further ado, let's get started. This first deck is a Kroxa Titan of Death's Hunger deck. This was one of the first decks I built back when I was returning to playing Paper Magic after I had a bit of a hiatus. Kroxa is a Rakdos discard deck, and it's not super fun to play against, which is maybe reason I haven't played as it very much lately. Because Kroxa is such a cheap commander, we can rely pretty heavily on having him to play in turn two. So the deck doesn't have a whole lot of two drops, but it does have a ton of discard synergy, way to make our opponents discard cards, and various payoffs of the like. The deck also does feature a ton of ways to get Kroxa out of the graveyard and onto the battlefield, even if it's not with the escape ability. Then of course we have a good amount of both rummage and wheeling effects to get cards out of our hand and into our graveyard so we can use them to escape Kroxa. My top five favorite cards from the deck are Havoc Festival, of course, Jockel Hops, Jockel Hops, whatever you want to call it. It's kind of hysterical. A lot of people are very salty about this card. I think it's just kind of funny personally. And don't worry, I don't play this unless I have a follow-up. Dark Tutelage, purely because as a Rakdos deck, I'm not running very much enchantment removal and this spell kills me very often. <laughs> Claim to Fame, an awesome budget removal card that just for one mana can grab Kroxa and on a later turn after he escapes, can give him haste. And last but not least, Sire of Insanity, another one of those salty cards that frankly, I just consider hysterical. <laughs> so here's the theme for my Kroxa discard deck. And you get to discard, say goodbye to your head. My next deck is a kind of Mardu life gain-ish deck. It's uh, Piru the Volatile. Piru, like many other of the Elder Dragons, has a trigger on your upkeep, where if you don't pay a certain cost, you have to sacrifice from right away. The deck runs a ton of legendary creatures and gives me a lot of options on stuff to either hit or not hit, depending on what I'm looking for at the moment. Also, being in Mardu, we have access to some of the best removal ever printed in the game. So if there's anything that Piru can't hit, our deck can deal with it. My five favorite cards from the deck are Havoc Vessel, for obvious reasons. Nizumi Grave Robber, which is a really cool anti-graveyard synergy card. Talia's Lancers, which in this deck, which doesn't run very many tutors, acts as essentially just grab whatever toolkit legendary creature I need for the moment. Fling to just toss Piru at people, it's hysterical, I love it. And a Crowan Horse to give all of our opponents some creatures to hit with Piru and gain some sweet, sweet life. And so here is the theme song for my Piru the Volatile deck. Who is a dragon that kills things, but only if they don't have a comma in the name? That's me. Piru. Next up, we have Arjun, the Shifting Flame. This is an is it storm adjacent deck. <laughs> Arjun lets us draw tons and tons of cards. So the deck, rather than rewarding you for casting multiple spells in a turn, rewards you for drawing lots of cards in a turn. And because Arjun triggers off of any spell, we run a ton of cantrips, a ton of cheap little spells to get our deck going and to keep cycling through our deck to find whatever cards we need. The deck also has a lot of ramp for an instant sorcery heavy deck, mostly because the deck does virtually nothing without Arjun on the field, so we really need to ramp hard to get Arjun out early. This actually originally started out as a budget deck where no card could be over 25 cents. This did exclude some pretty basic cards, I think, for this kind of archetype, such as Brainstorm or Preordain, and eventually I let this for sure can go and put in another, I'd say about another 20 bucks or so. So it's still a fairly budget deck, but it's it's quite good at what it does. Throw one of my favorite cards in the deck, Thundering Jin, which whenever it attacks, can deal damage equal to the number of cards you've drawn to this turn to whatever you want, which can actually just be a finisher depending on how many spells you've cast of Arjun on the field. Then we've also got Thousand Year Storm. I'd say one of the kings of six mana do nothing enchantments. It's extremely fun, extremely stupid. This deck is a great home for it. <laughs> uh, we've got Invoke Calamity, which I always fought, looked down upon when the uh, card initially came out, even in draft and whatnot. But it's really uh, proved to be very effective this deck because you are casting the spells you grab with it, which triggers Arjun. Uh, Wizards of Fey, an interesting new instant sorcery cost reducer from uh, Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate. Arcane Bombardment, another great addition to the list of six mana do nothing enchantments. Unlike Thousand Year Storm, this does also cast the spells, so they do trigger Arjun. More and more ways to just draw tons and tons of cards. And so here's my theme for Arjun the Shifting Flame. Oh yeah. 
And then there's Riku of Two Reflections. This is a deck that's a budget list based around arcane spells. Arcane is a instant sorcery subtype developed in the original Kamigawa block. So essentially your hand just keeps filling up for arcane spells. You just keep tossing onto one spell and then you just make this one gigantic massive mega spell that you copy off of Riku. It's a lot of fun, honestly. The deck runs a few additional ways to copy these big spells besides Riku, like Galvanic Iteration and Double Vision. And we do also run just a couple creatures that would go into a typical Riku of Two Reflections deck such as Mall Drifter, just to give us a little bit of extra value we need to stay relatively competitive with pre-con level decks. In terms of some of my favorite cards in the deck, one of them is Heed the Mists. This is possibly the most inconsistent draw spell I've ever seen. Then we've got Evermind, which might actually be the best spell in the deck. Then we've got Through the Breach, which is in the deck partially for the synergy, but also largely partially because the art with Emrakul on it is beautiful. Very well done, Randy Vargas. Now you're in for a doozy. Eternal Dominion, one of the five epic spells, and that's a keyword ability, like an actual game mechanic, not just like a moniker of given spell, that were printed in the original Kamigawa block. And lastly, the Unspeakable, one of the ultimate arcane synergy cards. There are three arcane spells that if you cast all three of them in one turn, you get to grab this guy from your deck for three and just put him onto the battlefield, but it's commander, so that just does not, that's just not gonna happen. But he's the funny big boy with a stupid mustache. And this is my Riku of Two Reflections theme song. Oh the misery, oh, the misery. Everybody, wants Everybody wants to be my, wants enemy. To be my enemy. Spare the Spare sympathy. the sympathy. Everybody wants Everybody to be, wants to be my, enemy. my enemy. My enemy. Get it? Cuz like cuz like there's two Rikus. There's two Rikus. And like it's and an like, arcane it's deck. It's an arcane deck. So it's like from, so the, it's show like from the show Arcane. Okay, this is a really dumb okay, bit. This is a really dumb bit. Next up, we've got my Gruel. Well, the deck doesn't have a commander. It has 27. Some of you actually may already know about this deck, but for the uninitiated, this deck is a gruel deck with 27 legendary gruel creatures in it. At the beginning of each game, just, you know, shuffle it up, reveal the top card, and oh look, is that a legendary creature? No. Ah, but here's one. So this game, say Mean and Den, would be my commander. Uh, the main reason this works is because almost every single gruel commander does one of two things either uh, ramp you into creatures that attack or attack themselves. So the deck is filled with essentially nothing but uh, ramp, creatures, little bit of removal, and that's about it. Honestly, it's very fun to play because it's not refined at all. It's a very budget list, but it's gruel, so it's kind of a non-issue. In terms of favorite cards from the deck, I am very fond of Guild Artisan. Basically allows you to just hit whoever has the most life and get some treasure for it which is much appreciated in a deck like this. Then there's Goblin and Narcomancer, a very bolt common from Modern Horizons 2, which in this deck is kind of insane. <laughs> then we've got Mirror Box, which actually acts as an anthem for nearly every creature in the deck, which is very cool. Uh, Minsk and Boo with the aforementioned Mirror Box is actually kind of insane because you get to keep the booze every turn. But this one's very fun, and it's the only Planeswalker in the deck. And lastly, what would a Gruul deck be without a, a little Colossal Dreadmaw? And here is a theme for my uh, Colossal Dreadmaw, I mean, uh, Gruul Random Commander deck list. Who's that Pokemon? It's the first legendary creature I see when I shuffle my deck. Next up, we've got Rakdos, Lord of Riots. This deck is chock full of Rakdos baddies to cast, make some cheap, make some fun. You have to play some jank stuff and some really good stuff and get rewarded for it. I uh, very much love this deck. There's a ton of ways to directly deal damage to our opponents from Spear Spewer to uh, Stormfist Crusader. Then we've got some great payoffs like Hypnox, which is hysterical how much of a blowout Hypnox is. It's, <laughs> especially when you can cast it for three mana, it's ridiculous. And then also a ton of ways to draw cards and refill our hands, like Ruin Grinder, just to just to keep the engine going, make sure that we can pump these big creatures out. In terms of favorite cards in the deck, we've got Havoc Festival, for obvious reasons. Bidalk and Ori? I know it seems like a weird one, but the main point of this is that whenever your opponents are attacking each other, that's life loss that Rakdos reduces. So you can just out of nowhere, just like slam a huge thing on the table with this. Then Humble Defector, I think one of the most fun and most, yeah, just, you know, 
one, one of the most fun ways to draw cards in red. A Shakedown Heavy, one of the most fun ways to draw cards in black. It's either a huge beater or a tap to draw a card, which I think is pretty sweet in black. And Sabo Tabak, bit jank, but so hysterical how quickly this gets removed from a table. I have never untapped with this. I don't think I ever will, but it's so funny. I'm glad I play it. <laughs> And so this is my theme for the Rakdos Lord of Riot's deck. Who out here trying to start a riot? Who out here trying to start a riot? Next, we've got what is currently my only commander deck that are partners, currently with Rebek and Silas Wren. Silas Wren is a pretty classic artifact deck card that lets you just grab artifacts at your graveyard and replay them. And Rebek is just kind of absurd. It does Nambo with a few things, but the insane amount of value and protection it grants you is worth whatever price you have to pay. So this Esper Artifacts deck originally started out as a Demir Artifacts deck built around Time Sieve and just trying to take as many extra turns as I could. It's not that anymore. <laughs> Believe it or not, I play Time Sieve for value. And on that note, uh, my colloquial name for this deck is It's Not a Combo Deck, I Promise, because, man, does this ever look like a combo deck? It's running, like, Staff of Domination, Time Sieve, Emery, Lurker of the Lock, Bolus of Citadel, all kinds of artifact shenanigans. But it genuinely is mostly just for value, and just getting me to the point where I can finish people off with some big artifacts like Parhelion 2 or Fraxian Triniform. Some of my favorite cards in the deck are the aforementioned Parhelion 2, just for the awesomeness of the card. Scroll Rack, because I mostly refuse to play top in this deck yet. I haven't stooped so low, but this is Pretty close and honestly pretty fun in my personal opinion. Then we've got this absolutely beautiful full art path to exile that I, I just really like the look of. Shorakai Genesis Engine. Man, I never crew this thing, but it gets so much value. This card is just very fun. And lastly, this Secret Layer Dan Frazier Arcane Signet, which I just think looks beautiful. It's probably not going to show up very well on camera, but I think it looks very nice. And with that said, this is the theme for my Rebek and Silas Ren Commander deck. It's not a combo. It's not a combo deck, I promise. I promise you this. It's not a combo. Now, this one is one of my favorite decks as of late. It is Tassiger the Golden Fang. Uh, this deck is called Tassiger's Real Estate Investments, as some of you may know. And the deck is full of not only just really cool old lands, but specifically old damage cards. This deck started out as a very damaged Underground Ripper and Hermager. And from there, it has evolved into just some very fun stuff. The deck has a ton of ways to get lands into my graveyard, play lands from my graveyard, just interact with both the graveyard and lands. Now, notably, Tassiger's second ability relies entirely on non-land cards. So yeah, this is a lands deck. The deck has a bunch of landfall payoffs like Grazing Gladeheart and Rampaging Bailoffs. For this deck, I actually have more than five cards to show you in terms of favorite cards, because there's just a few too many lands that I really want to talk to you about. There's cards like Rainbow Veil, vale, which are very fun, very jank, and just give you a lot of fun options. There's this very beat up original Legends printing of Pendlehaven. The second ability only has like two targets in the deck, but I don't know, I think it's funny. There's the obligatory copy of Star's Path and the Cool Lands deck. Also from the dark is this beautiful, very beat up Maze of If. Then we've got Psychic Vortex, which in my personal opinion is one of the funniest and most metal ways to keep your hand full. Uh, Zernorb, which has provided me some pretty insane value actually. This Antiquities Feldens Cane, which is one of the uh, funniest ways to save your graveyard for removal, in my personal opinion. And lastly, probably the land that started it all is this Underground River, which I think genuinely has the start of a of a bite taken out of it. <laughs> it's really quite something. And so here's the theme for Tassiger's real estate investment. If you need a land, if you need a land, just go see the man, just go see the man. Tassiger, Tassiger, Tassiger's real estate. And so that's all the decks I have to show you for today. Uh, thank you all. Um... <sighs> well, I guess it's not all.
So then there's the Sorrow's Path deck. The Sorrow's Path deck is uh, quite simply my magnum opus. As you can see, since probably the last time that you've seen this deck, we now have a very convenient, uh, let's call it scaffolding, to allow me to play the deck upright. Also, as per the suggestion of one of the guys on my LGS, uh, instead of a graveyard, we have a uh, beautiful waste basket that we can toss cards right into. The deck is, of course, built around the deck's namesake card, Sorrow's Path, and I think many of you probably know a good bit about this deck. Although you may not know that I recently uh, got a one inch Lucite slab for Garth One Eye, which it just looks so ridiculous. It's hysterical. I mean, like, look at this. In a world where people are net decking and people are complaining about mass land destruction, one man will try to play something really, really stupid. This is. Walking the Path of Sorrows Without Shoes. Coming this fall. So now this has actually been all the decks that I have to show you today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. If you have any questions about any of the decks besides deck lists, I'm not going to be providing deck lists. Sorry. Please let me know. I'm Sam Huggins, and have yourself a very nice day. Also, this might be an incredibly controversial opinion, but uh, I'm Van Emrico.